the reason. What happens when you love somebody too much? Why does that lead to the death of that person? You remember when I brought Tatiana out as well? What do, why does loving somebody too much lead to the death of that person? The person, the object of love. But in this case, the, the, the madness of the one who is loving too much. Why? Let's talk about why does the object of love die? Either it is your future, either, either it is uh, a desire, or a pleasure, or a person. How many of you still remember? So why will too much love kill five children? Even if it's done with our own hands. Those children are still going to die. But she is going to be the reason for it. Even though it might not be through her hand. Why does loving somebody too much leads to the death of that object of love? Anybody wants to talk about that? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> we'll see how good a student you are. <laughs> Yeah. There are several reasons you could give, so let's yeah. hear your arguments. I think the first reason is that when you love someone to that extent, what happens is that, like you taught us, that you place that person in a position where the person cannot deliver. I mean, because when God says that he is the only one that we should love with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, with everything, it is because... He is the, I mean, he is love. He's the source of love. You cannot exhaust him. So no matter the demand that you place on him, he will deliver because he is love personified. But when you place that demand on a, on a human being who doesn't have the, the ability, the, who doesn't have the capability to deliver as you demand, you ruin that person. I mean, you... you you cause that person to actually die because the person cannot, I mean, it's just like a demand and supply thing. You are making so much demand because of the love that you have for that person. But the person doesn't have what it takes to give that adequate supply. So, like, you're just drawing and sucking life from the person. And so the more you suck life from the person, the person is like, like, you're just tricking me. And I'm like, ah, you're asking me for this, but I can't give you what you're asking me for. And then, bam, the person dies. The person is dead. Beautiful. Beautiful. You have a good one, but anybody wants, want to add to it? Either from another aspect or add there are different other arguments? Come, come, come. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Be bold. Be bold. <laughs> be bold. Be bold. Be bold. I explained to us, why does love come to hate? Why is it that the object of love will die when we love too much? Okay, my own uh, explanation. Explanation in this uh, aspect is um, when you love someone too much it actually makes you like value that person equal to God and as pastor taught us the other day he said God is supposed to be above when you now place that person above ah. there is no coverage <laughs> like this yeah there is no coverage. God is supposed to be the protection for everybody. The exactly, coverage. exactly. And since you replace the person above God, you expose the, the person. person. Mm. You now expose the person. So, um, another one is, when you love somebody too much, you actually place that person, you, you have, you know, made that person an idol. And God hates idol. And Pastor thought, um, like uh, last week that God said uh, he's going to bring a soil to separate you know, so separate so that we will actually know that the, the, that value you place on that person is supposed to belong to God so we are not supposed to love somebody above God God is a jealous God you cannot, you know, place a value that is supposed to be given to God mm. on an individual. Mm. When you begin to do that, you have you, you virtually put that person in danger. Mm. Mm. So now, come, come guy. Oh, you, okay, I think you want to. Okay, very beautiful. You remember, you see, you remember, you remember, yeah. you 
you listen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get yeah. fun. <laughs> I, I remember a similar thing to what uh, they both said, but I remember saying you saying that we um by loving somebody too much, you're sucking the energy out mm. of them. You're draining them out of energy. And eventually, that person is going to either be sick yeah. or the person may die as well once you suck out all the energy from them. But in this case of this woman, with the way... Um, she she lost, lost it. Yes, she lost it because probably the children cannot give her the love. No, 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 no. Not what? just she cannot give her... Okay, let's look okay, now. Let's deal with the situation with the children. Let's deal with this particular woman and the killing of the children. Yeah, you want us to deal with it, right? Yeah. Okay, in this particular situation, a problem you know, I don't know her, I do, I never interviewed her. I, uh, you know, I've never spoken to her. I didn't know the big story. This, or the, this thing I showed you is what I know, but because of my researches and my you know thoughts understanding. understanding and thinking and knowing principles of life i i know and i will say that our problem started long before she married mm. Mm. You, are you getting it mm -hmm. not yet mm -hmm. not yet i should consider yeah if you want to go and you can join mm -hmm. our problem started long before she married when she was still young as a young girl, mm. she had idolized marriage, marriage children. children. Mm. Mm. You get it? Mm -hmm. So she had idolized the the office, not office, the marriage institution. Mm. She had idolized the marriage institution and dreamed, even before those children came to life. She had lived by them. So she had been sucking those children there even before they came to life. Mm -hmm. Now, but in her own case, what happened is that she gave back to them too rapidly, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. huh? Seven years, five children. In seven years, five children is, is just insane. Mm -hmm. In seven years, five children, there are so many of them. Even though she's supposed to love them, but that love she had for them is not just you are going the right direction. That mm -hmm. Those children are not able to return because she was having an ideal expectation of children. Mm -hmm. She was having an idealized, an idealized, what do you call it? Do you understand what I'm saying? An ideal. She, I mean, ideal. An expectation she had. Mm -hmm. That children are blessed. Yeah. She's the kind that thinks that children are blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, most people are not, most women are not being told that children, before they become blessed, they are first of all sacrificed. Children are always sacrificed. Mm -hmm. But we don't hear about that almost. Uh -huh. Children are not blessed, first of all. Children are a blessing in the ephemerical, 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 right? Yeah. In the ephemerical understanding of it. Mm -hmm. Blessed in the ephemerical of understanding. You know, blessing. But that is a miracle. Mm -hmm. But in real life, children are suffering. Mm -hmm. Children are pain. Mm -hmm. Children are deprived. Yeah. De de deprived. Deprivation. deprivation. Mm -hmm. Children are deprivation. Mm -hmm. Children are tolerance. Tolerance. Mm -hmm. Pain. Long suffering. Mm -hmm. Perseverance. Mm -hmm. Children are mm -hmm. not blessed. No, in court. Yeah. Yeah. Children are labor. Yeah. Children are suffering. But so anybody who thinks and idealize, I, I, idolizes mm -hmm. children thinking that they are blessing puts herself in a danger mm -hmm. of depression, of ethic, no, chronic depression, mm -hmm. Which is mental, mental yeah. disorder. That's what she had. Mm. Because the children are not only not a blessing. Because they are too young. Yeah. Mm. Five children in seven years. They are too young to be a blessing to her. Mm. But she, her husband was walking away. She is the only one at home. With those five children for money tonight. Mm. Mm. 
It's no more that there are no more blessing, mm. or there will be blessing sometime before she just she cannot think about that anymore. Mm. It is only children. One is in seed sucking your breast. One is to tell you other. One is on your head. One. Those children mm. are source of love. They became only source of irritation, mm. anger, mm. desperation. Mm. They ran a mad. Mm. You see why she ran mad now? Yeah. <laughs> Man, this gives, this gives so much insight. I'm going, to, go explain I'm going to use this now to the reason why out of 10 marriages, we have 8 people that are divorced. Ah, now, now I, was, I, I, was still, I was still going to ask you people that. Yeah. That on the basis of this teaching we yeah. are going up, do you now know why 8 out of 10 marriages yeah. end up in divorce? Also, do you now understand why conflicts mm. between parents and children is the blessing, is the greatest blessing, blessing ever. that could ever ah. <laughs> yes. Now yes. you go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I got it. Why? Because now this is the reason, just from this explanation, I mean it's just like a light bulb just came up. This is the reason why in 10 marriages, it ends up in divorce. And mm. this is why. Because first, it starts with the pressure. And the idea that marriage brings fulfillment and that marriage is, I mean, without marriage, there is no success in life. So this culture and this ideology has created um, pictures in the mind of, I mean, I mean, a young girl is thinking of a white gown from her childhood. She's thinking of how she's going to look like on the wedding day. So she has, a, she has an ideal picture in her mind saying okay the day i get married i'm waiting for the day my wedding day i'm waiting to have a husband so now in her mind she has a lot of fantasy a lot of ideas and so she has idolized the the marriage constitution so what happens is that now because of the ideology that she has there's there are certain expectations that she has about our future husband mm -hmm. saying this is the kind of man i expect to see i mean when we get married this is how the marriage will look like this is how our first night will look like mm -hmm. our first month so she she has idolized the concept of marriage mm -hmm. and then she has given an ideal picture in her mind of what the man should look like and how the man should treat her mm -hmm. and how the man should talk to her what he should say to her in the night before she sleeps. So all of this has created an ideal picture in her mind. So now she's waiting for the day for marriage. Mm -hmm. Waiting to meet that guy. Mm -hmm. So now she meets the man, or maybe the man meets the woman, and then he gets married, and then the first week, maybe it looks like it, but then one month after, mm -hmm. this doesn't look like the picture I had in my mind when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. This doesn't look like, I mean, I didn't expect marriage to, to, to be this, because marriage in itself is work. Marriage in itself is tasking. I mean, this is that like, two people coming to live together with different ideologies. And, and I mean, this is just a whole job together. It's challenging. It's painful. So now when she gets into this marriage and this, and then the our reality doesn't fall in line with our ideal, I mean, our ideal picture in our mind. That is exactly where the catastrophe comes in. So because she had an idea of what the marriage should look like. Mm -hmm. She had the picture. Mm -hmm. She has idolized marriage. And then when reality sets in, and her reality is not in sync with her ideology of what it should look like, they can't keep on. Because she's like, no, all of my dreams are shattered. Mm -hmm. All of my hopes. This is, a, this is what I've been living for all my life. So when for me to find this man. And then I found him, I got married to him, and it doesn't look like what I've expected. I can't continue. I mean, I, we, we can't continue living together, and bam, divorce happens. So this is what I understand by this concept, why love turns to hate. Is there a reason why you're saying she? No, 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 I, I mean, it works, it works woman, together. But, but the pressure more is, is on more ladies anyways. Yeah, that, it, could that, that, it could be men definitely but it's more on i mean coming from my she would down come from the other side from the other side yeah <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> give it, give it. <laughs> <laughs> don't go away <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, I'm going to say he as well now. Ah. <laughs> so, with the, with the guys or with men, they have the expectation of a woman. Without actually looking at the substance of marriage or relationship, we're looking at the idea, what we have in our head. But obviously, at times, what is in the head is not what reality is. So when people come together, in this case, we're using marriage as an example. So when you come together, the reality of what you see, like, you know, what you see in the magazine or in the picture, even when you met the, the girl, you know, she's nicely dressed, she's well-shaped, everything is well-packed, packaged. But when you actually see the, the person day to day, it's another story entirely. What you see is totally different from the picture, the picture perfect that we have. So I think the moral of the story for me is that we need to um, know, have substance. I think that... We need to stop idolizing the idolizing church. The idol. yes. We need to not make... Um, the, the condition the, you know, of marriage. Not, yeah, we need to stop making men or women the focus of our satisfaction True. or the source of our joy. Mm -hmm. You, a man cannot be the source of your joy. Mm -hmm. A woman cannot be the source of your joy. Marriage cannot be the source of your joy. Yeah. Wealth cannot be the source of your joy. Mm -hmm. No, riches cannot be the source of your joy. The source of your joy can only be God. Get attached to Him and Him only. True, true. true. It's actually simpler. I don't know why we're not even adopting okay. that. Okay. Because it's much, much simpler to, okay. to understand that the source of your joy is God and get attached to God than to human being because we're very feeble. You know, even if somebody thinks that I am the source of their joy, I change all the time. There's so many things that, you know, I don't know as well, but God knows everything. He's, he's everything. So why we focus on each other or something or, yeah, I think, I, yeah. Yeah. well, I think, <laughs> I can even give an answer to that. I can Go give ahead. an answer to that because, you know, just, I mean, how do you, I, 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 how do you, what, what's your picture of God? And how can God give you joy? Hmm. Because, no, because it's, it sounds very good to say, oh, God should be my source of joy. But how? <laughs> I know how you can give me joy. Let's say I like um, KFC chicken and I get happy eating KFC chicken. You know how to give me joy. Although it might be short-lived. Or they might not be, I mean, you're not my source of joy, but you can give me joy. Yeah. And I know how to ask you. I know how to satisfy me. But when it comes to God, I mean, how do you conceptualize it? So that is the reason why it's very easy. <laughs> and it's very, I mean, it's very subtle for people to, for, idolize. For people to idolize each other. Because we are physical here, man. <laughs> God is, is spiritual. So but how do I get joy and satisfaction from if, God? From God. Even, let's talk about riches too. But Pardon? from God even, even from God. You people think they figure they can answer that your question. Yeah. Most people will think that they can answer that your question. Mm -hmm. How can we get satisfaction from God? And the answer is we go to church. Yes. I dance, praise and worship. I serve in departments. They don't know. They have just replaced God with all of those things. with religion. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a huge concept. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I mean we need lights. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we need light, we need illumination because this thing is very deep and the more we're talking about it, it's making me even question so many things. I mean, it's, make, it's raising questions in my mind about this whole idea of, of getting satisfaction. Like, for example, Pastor talked about not even getting, making money your source of joy. It's very easy for you to be satisfied and to even get fulfillment from earthly riches because it's measurable. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, I, for example, I set a goal to get to a million dollars in one year, and I achieved it. That is something that gives me joy, satisfaction. It's 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 very measurable. But but with God, how do I get it? And how do I feel like I'm satisfied with Him? Because all that we have learned, I mean, what, all what we have known this year, all these years, has been religion. And that's why this topic on knowing and understanding God through love, I mean, it's a very, very deep topic. Very okay. deep. Um, from all the things I'm hearing, it's like my mind is really working over time in terms of how do we um, kind of 
not to fall victim to this. Well, I that's my own main yeah. thing is not to fall victim to this. Yeah. Is that not to look to gain satisfaction from others. Yeah. Or we can, but not overly. But it's hard to balance that's to ba to have a balance. And I don't know how we can strike yeah, that balance. It's better to okay. say God it should be your main satisfaction. Mm. God mm. should be your main satisfaction. Mm. All other ones are just joy. Yeah. All other things give you joy, but God gives you satisfaction. Mm. You don't get it. And even with that... Yeah, but how can I quantify that? If I say God gives me satisfaction, it's... Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe peace wants to say something. Yeah. Okay, first. I want her to... I want to um, use my own personal life mm. to what we are saying here. When I was a child growing up, I saw the way my my parents were, you know, they lived. My father loved my mother very much, and I begin to, you know, have it at the back of my mind that. The, the, the kind of man mm. I'm going to marry, the kind of home, the kind of um, family, family mm. I will have. And in fact, all my life I was like having that kind of picture. Mm. You know, the thing took all over me that this is the kind of man I'm going to marry. This is, you know, my I, family. Yeah, my family and the thing just, mm. you know took over me yeah. and that's I what was, we talk about idolizing yes. yeah and i was not talking about god let your will be done mm. what you have for me let it be done mm. i was not i was mm. not saying that because mm. i now came to realize that god can give me somebody that i will save mm. that will not be like my own parents the way they were mm. so but i was this is what I want. I want that, you know, and I want to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I got married, mm -hmm. my own husband is a is from a polygamous home mm -hmm. that, you know, in the family, in fact, a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. In fact, the it was the opposite. It was the opposite. Mm -hmm. And when I came initially when we are courting, it was because courtship and marriage is totally different. Totally different. I didn't I didn't see it. So when we got married, the whole thing was the opposite. Mm. In, in, my marriage nearly crashed mm. until I now sat down and began to say, ah. you know, even when I took like took to counsel with pastor, it was uh, the pastor was saying, ah, it's like you're backsliding. Mm. No, but nobody was able to <laughs> tell me the real truth yeah. mm. about the matter. Mm. Nobody was able to cancel me well, mm -hmm. you know, because when you, when you begin to ask, what is the matter? Mm -hmm. There is no quarrel at home, but my expectation, mm -hmm. yeah. my ideas, no match up with reality. was mm -hmm. not what I am saying. True. So nobody was able to cancel me, mm -hmm. you know, to bring me to reality. Mm -hmm. God just virtually stepped into my marriage mm. because I sat down and I begin to think mm. I begin to think I said we are of two different parents mm. his way of being brought up and my own was different mm. and I begin to say okay if God wants me mm. to bring this man to light to have that kind of home okay I leave it and those things that was happening that was, you know, getting me crazy, mm. I begin to leave it for God. Mm. I begin to relax. Mm. Even when I get angry, I say, no, 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 no. This person is from a different background. I cannot force him. I cannot put all expectation on mm -hmm. him. So I begin to, you know, cut my idea of what I was expecting, mm. that idea gradually began to die down. Mm. And when that idea began to die down, I began to see peace mm. in the home. I began to see nature. I began to see that 
whatever, whoever, how you know you are made, that mm. it's God that made you like that. Mm. And it's for a purpose. Mm. So not putting pressure, like some parents, they, they bring their child and they are already having an idea. This uh, uh, child is going to be a, a, a man of God. This one is going to be a doctor. And ah, at the ah, end of the day, when, they don't... when the child now begins to go, like the way. child begins to be a musician, you know, their, their whole world begins to crash. True. They begin to hate the child, mm -mm. you know, mm. because of the expectation, mm. the ideas they had mm. before now. Mm. So it's not good to begin to idolize something. Mm. It's good to love, but mm. when love begins to turn to an idol, mm -hmm. God hates it. Mm. And he, he eventually mm. turn you against it. Mm. It becomes his purpose because mm. you have idolized that thing. Mm. Mm. God wants us to make him the focus of our life. Mm. When you begin to focus on mm. your idea, your expectation, mm. God turns it and it becomes the opposite. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Amazing. But you are saying...